All right, this video is going to show you how to do transformations of parent functions for our benchmark. We're going to start with just um, talking about what transformations do in general. So when we have a function f of x, remember f of x is our y. So if I take f of x plus c, if I add outside my function and c is positive, this is going to shift my graph up c unit. Because I'm taking my old y and I'm adding c. So for any given x, the new y is going to be c many units above the old y. Um, similarly, if, if, if I subtract c and c is positive, I'm going to shift down c units. Um, when I multiply, I'm taking my old y, multiplying it by c. So of course, I'm going to do a vertical stretch by a factor of c. And if I take it and I have c is in between 0 and 1, so some fraction or decimal, then I'm going to do a vertical shrink, like multiplying by 1 half outside of my function. Uh, then the other one that's outside is the negative f of x, and that's a vertical flip. Vertical flip is over the x-axis, which is sort of weird. But remember, you're flipping it up and down. So this is what we will call over the x-axis. So vertical goes over the x, which is the horizontal axis. But that's how you flip vertically. These are our vertical transformations. And they all go directly the way you think. Adding is up, subtracting is down, multiplying by a big number stretches, multiplying by a small number is um, shrinking. So these are the vertical transformations. Now, the horizontal transformations happen inside the parent. So here's our horizontal ones. And these are all backwards because you are doing something to x before you put it into the function. So to get the same y as before, your x, if I'm adding 3 to it, the, the y will happen 3 units before because I'm going to take that x and add 3 to it. So if I add c, you would think you would go to the right, but instead you're going to shift left c units. Similarly, subtracting c in or inside is going to shift to the right c units. It's backwards from what you would think. Adding, you generally think, goes forward. But in this case, it's going to shift backwards. Similarly with multiplying. Um, multiplying by a big number should stretch, but since this is horizontal and horizontals are all backwards, not shift, sorry, this is going to shrink horizontally by a factor of c, which means you're going to come in towards the y-axis. Uh, and then if we multiply by the small number, we are going to stretch horizontally factor of c. And if we change the sign on our x inside, that's what we call a horizontal flip. In this case, we are going to go it's horizontal, but that means over the y axis. OK, so we're going to take these transformations, and we're going to do them to our parent function. So we're going to start on these with our parent function. The parent here, so that's your first job. First job is id your parent function. In this case, it's 1 over x. Now, I know 1 over x has asymptotes, and it's my boomerangs, OK? So now what am I doing? Am I adding, so I'm adding, inside or outside? I'm adding inside that parent. It's down here inside 1 over x. You could think of it like this. This is an inside transformation. So this is going to shift. And since I'm adding, I shift left 1 unit. Now, what shifts on this graph is these asymptotes. So my vertical asymptote in particular normally is right on the x-axis. That is going to shift one unit to the left. My vertical doesn't change at all. So that, that horizontal asymptote is still there. And then my graph just shifts over one. And that's what you need. You need on your parent function benchmark to show me where the asymptotes end up and then do the curve showing asymptotic behavior. Now, when we think about this, what has changed from this original? Domain, range, both, or neither. 
Well, here, I could not have 0 for x, and I could not have 0 for y. Everything else was good. In my new one, the number that I can't have is negative 1, because that would make me divide by 0, which is always a problem. So instead of being from negative infinity to 0, and 0 to infinity, on this original, on this one, it's negative infinity to negative 1, and then negative 1 to infinity. And so I, my domain has changed. The range has not changed at all. Only my domain has changed. All right. Um, here we have 2 absolute value of x minus 1. So first is identify your parent. My parent function is absolute value of x, and you should know what that looks like. 0, 0, and it goes up, and its slope is 1. What are the transformations? So ID your parent, then figure out what are your transformations. Well, and you start with the x and work out. So your first transformation is the vertical stretch. And then your second transformation is to shift everything down 1. So I start with this graph right here, and I'm going to vertically stretch. So instead of going over 1, up 1, I'm going to go over 1 and up 2, and so forth. So my new graph would have a slope now basically of 2, or negative 2. And then I'm going to take this new graph and I'm going to go down 1. And so this point right here, this key point, goes down 1. And my slope is 2, so I go up 2 and over 1. And here's my slope. There's another point right there. So what I'm going to want on this, when I do the vertical transformation, is I want a key point. Now what has changed? Well, I've done vertical and I've only done vertical transformations. So those are the only possible things that could have changed. Um, so it's not only the domain, and it's not both. Uh, it could still be neither, but by shifting down, this used to be 0 and above. Now my range is negative 1 and above, so my range has changed. Right. Uh, here we have 1 minus x cubed. And the trick on this one, so my parent function, again, is x cubed. That's my parent function. Now I want to do my transformations. And it helps to think about this right here as negative x cubed plus 1. That 1 is a positive number. You are adding a positive 1 to a negative x cubed. So my transformations, transformation number 1, is a vertical flip. And it's vertical because it is not inside. Horizontal flip would look like this, negative x cubed. Now it turns out, in this case, the two... No, actually, they are different, but um, uh, no, actually, they're not. So this is a vertical flip, and then our next transformation is to go up 1. So I take my original, you have to know what your original looks like, x cubed. I do a vertical flip down like that, and then I take this, and I go up 1. So I take this, and the 0, 0 goes up to 1, and I come down like so. So the key shape and the key point. What has changed? I've done a bunch of vertical stuff again. Um, however, my original range was negative infinity to infinity. And my new range is negative infinity to infinity. So this is one of those functions, since it has domain and range of all real numbers, you will never change its domain and range. All right, let's try another one. Uh, here's another one, 2 minus 1 over x squared. This is another one we may think it's easier to think of as negative 1 over x squared plus 2. My parent function is 1 over x squared. So here's my starting point. It's my volcano. Um, what's transformation number 1? It's this negative, which is a vertical flip. So that's going to take me over the x-axis. Remember, vertical, vertical, vertical. It's up and down. So up and down is this way. I'm flipping it. So that's how I end up with this. And then I take that and I go up 2. And what moves up 2? Everything. Every y value is 2 higher. Every y value is 2 higher. And what the key feature that ends up up 2 is my vertic or my horizontal, sorry, asymptote, is at 2 and I cross. I still have the same vertical asymptote right here. And so there, it should be a little more symmetrical, but there's the general 
idea. Now, what has changed? Well, here I could not have x equal to 0, and I could not have y was greater than or, equal, or not equal to, just greater than 0. Here, my range changed to y is now less than 0, but my domain is still x can't equal 0. And over here, I still have x can't equal 0. y is now less than 2. So what has changed from this to this is the range, only the range. There's been sort of a lot of only range changing. Don't worry, there will be horizontal changes as well. Uh, let's try one, three, sine of four x. So parent function is sine of x. You should know parent function. Sine starts in the sinusoidal axis and goes up. Normal period is two pi, goes up to one, down to negative one. So what are my transformations? That four changes my period. It shrinks horizontally, which shrinks my period. Now, if I start at a period of two pi and I take that and I shrink it by four, my new period is pi over two. That is one cycle. And then this does a, a vertical. So this is a horizontal shrink. And this is a vertical stretch. So instead of going up to 1 and down to negative 1, I'm going to go up to 3 and down to negative 3. Now, I haven't done any shifting, so I still go through 0, 0. But now what happens is I do a whole period right there in pi over 2. And coming backwards, I would do a whole period backwards. That would be negative pi over 2, which means this right here is half of that pi over 4, and we could do the other points. But So what I'm going to want to see is your y scale, right? And you need y scale. I want to know how high, how low, and I want to know what my period is. What has changed? So you might think that I've changed my domain, but really, remember, these graphs go on forever. The original domain is negative infinity to infinity. The domain here is negative infinity to infinity. I keep going in this manner forever, and that hasn't changed at all. So the domain has not changed. But originally, I could go from negative 1 to 1 for my range. And now I'm negative 3 to 3. So only the range changed. Let's try one more. Negative cosine of x over 2. All right, so my parent function is cosine of x, which starts at the top, comes back up, has a period of 2 pi. Um, transformations. Dividing by 2 is going to do a horizontal stretch. Remember, all of our horizontals are backwards. This is inside, and I'm dividing, which is going to be multiply. So my normal period is 2 pi. My new period is twice as big, 4 pi. Okay, And then this is a vertical flip, because that is outside. So I take this graph, and I'm going to stretch my period. So I'm going to stretch my period. So the next one would be, instead of this being 2 pi, this would be 4 pi. And then I do a vertical flip, which means this point up here ends up down here. This point down here ends up up there. And I get something like this. So I'm going to start at negative 1, because I haven't done any stretching vertically. And I'll go up to 1. And this will be now at 4 pi. And I can Similarly, go backwards, and this would be negative 4 pi. Um, what has changed? My domain has not changed. My range has not changed. So this one turns out to be neither has changed.